Joining us now on the Payless Liquors Hotline, he is in, I believe, his 14th season on staff at Davidson, his first as the head coach. Matt McCullough joins us to talk about that particular game. Coach, first off, good morning to you. Appreciate you getting up early with us. Yeah, good morning. Great to be on with you guys. Uh, you sound wide awake. Are you a, like a coffee latte guy? What time do you wake up in the morning? Uh, it all depends on my household. I've got a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and then my wife and I have a, have a three-month-old baby boy. So uh, it's, there's, there's little sleep going on right now. I'm usually having to find my way to be wide awake. Boy, there's a three, three-month-old three in my house. Thoughts and prayers with you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, Coach, how did this game come about? Obviously, we are used to the Crossroads Classic here in Indiana, Purdue, Butler, Notre Dame for about a decade. And then, you know, it seemed like there was interest from Purdue to maintain some sort of indie presence. Uh, How did you guys come to be? Was the lawyer connection part of the reason that you wanted to schedule this game? That that had a lot to do with it, yeah. And, um, you know, as you mentioned, I just took over as head coach and uh, recently, um, you know, end of June was when I was named head coach. But as an assistant for the last several years, one of my responsibilities was was putting together our non-conference schedule. So we, we always do whatever we can to find power five teams, top 25 teams, you know, the most highly ranked teams we can play to compete against. And it's, it's challenging for us to find teams that will play us, you know, on a, on a home court at our place. Um, usually they want to play only a game, uh, you know, a money game on, on their home court. And I reached out to somebody on the, on the Purdue staff, you know, sometimes sometime early last basketball season and, and mentioned that, hey, with, with Foster Lawyer here and Fletcher Lawyer there, is this, is this something that could be of interest to you guys? And then a couple of weeks later, I got a, I got a call um, about this event and, um, you know, the Crossroads, Cla- the Crossroads Classic coming to an end, but some, some type of similar doubleheader being played and um, Davidson for, versus Purdue being an option. And I think the lawyer piece to it was what was attractive to us, but also attractive to, 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 to them. And um, it, made, it made sense, and we were excited to be a part of it. Which has caused you uh, to stay awake late at night in the last week with more frequency, having a three-month-old or figuring out what to do against number one Purdue and Zach Eady? I would say my three-month-old is pretty tame compared to what Zach Eady is <laughs> currently doing on the court um, across the college basketball world. Uh, he, he's terrific. Um, you know, we uh, when my my first year actually on staff at Davidson, we played Purdue in Indy. And um, we had Steph Curry, and they had Joe, Jawan Johnson, Etwan Moore, Robbie Hummel, Chris Kramer. Um, they were really good, and I was tasked with being, a, you know, one of the coaches doing a scout. And and right away, I, I my eyes were open to the kind of type of coach that Matt Painter is, and the way he can get his team to play, the the style of their offense, and just how challenging it is to guard. We, we played them again a few years ago down in the Charleston Classic as well. So, um, no surprise that Coach Painter has been able to take a freshman backcourt, put them together with a, 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 I say developing only because he's, his production last year was, you know, minimal, if you will, compared to what he's doing right now. But no, no surprise at all that Coach Painter has figured out a way to make this team the best team in the country. Coach, I wanted you to give kind of a perspective for people listening. Matt McCullough is our guest, the head coach at Davidson. Uh, you were an assistant, as you mentioned, when Steph Curry was there. And, you know, there are people listening right now that might have a young person in the household that's that's an aspiring athlete, or maybe young people are listening. Steph Curry was the son of an NBA player, but he was probably thought coming out of high school to be a little bit undersized. And there probably would have been a lot of motivation in him to say, you know, why am I not at one of the big power fives? I mean, that is no disrespect to Davidson, but just based on his pedigree, What did you see out of him in terms of his work ethic or preparation to get him to the point where he is now that could be a lesson for young people? So what I'll first I'll preface with this is I just stayed out of his way. He was that exceptional. And I was only on staff for his last year at Davidson. So I was not necessarily a part of the recruiting process. I was actually on the Davidson team when he visited um, as as a, as a member of the team. Um, But what, what I saw the one year I was on staff with him, I'm sorry, the one year I was on staff and he was on the team was um, he had an an unbelievable daily approach and it was regimented and he took it seriously and it it wasn't just rolling the ball out and get a few shots up. Like he had, he was intentional about what he did when he stepped on the court every day as a, as a 20, 20, 21 year old. Um, But what, what sets him apart now, which is who he also was as a college player, which I imagine he did as a high school, an AAU player was, he had this mental capacity to live in the moment, unlike 
anybody you'll ever see. Um, he could make a mistake, and it would not affect his next possession. He could miss a shot. He could turn the ball over. He could get beat defensively. But he was able to perform that next possession as if it was the first possession, as if he was, you know, starting from scratch. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's so, it sounds so simple. It sounds so easy. But that, that is a challenge that I deal with, that our players deal with, that you, you want to be able to give them, like, this magic potion that they can, they can drink and all of a sudden be able to perform like that. But, but he has an unbelievable ability to live in the moment, to play in the moment, and to not let anything affect him. Again, it's going to be Dave. Sorry about that, Coach. It's going to be Davidson and Purdue coming up Saturday evening over at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Um, I want to go back to something that you mentioned earlier just about facing Purdue. How do you replicate Zach Eady in practice? I, I'm like, you know, picturing scenes from the movie of like, yeah, here's our tallest head coach with a broom and, you know. Well, like it, Ollie getting on the shoulders, right? Sure, yeah. Like, I, I'm picturing a little bit of that. Can you and, and how do you simulate, you know, what is probably the most unique matchup in college basketball? Yeah, it's <clears throat> I, what I would say, and, and I'll, I'll put it this way. So we're in exams right now. So we, we played last Wednesday. We had a few off days. We practiced over the weekend. We had we were off the last two days. Now we're going to be full boat into practice preparation for Purdue. And we tre- treated our previous practices less about our next opponent. It was more about us and what we needed to do to get better with a little sprinkle in, in a few subtle things about Purdue in there without our players maybe realizing it because we, we were really working on ourselves. But um, – in my opinion, it's more about when, when he catches the ball, there's so little that you can actually do when he catches it in the right spot. So it, it, you don't really need a seven foot four person on the court necessarily. It's, it's more about keeping, keeping everybody who could possibly be close to that size on our team or on our scout team away from certain spots on the court and making things difficult for them. Um, I don't think anybody in the country can replicate it. And we do have a really tall freshman, and by really tall, he's going to be dwarfed by Zach Eady, um, who we're, we're thinking, hey, should we put him on scout team? And he's not someone you'd want on scout team. We want him playing and getting reps because he's going he's gonna to contribute minutes as he has in almost every game this year. But, um, but yeah, we're probably going to have one of our assistant coaches who's maybe five, 5'11", six foot tall, but he's he's got some strength and some size to maybe play post position. He'll replicate him as best he can um, because it's the best it's the best option we have on our team. And I know it's going to feel quite a bit different when we go for the jump ball on on Saturday. But um, but yeah, I, I think the question you ask is what everybody will struggle with as they go through the year and they prepare for Purdue. How can you how can you replicate that? And, and I don't think you can. All right, New Zealand, Switzerland, Italy, Iceland. It's a hell of an international recruiting budget here um, for the Davidson roster. I assume that's a pretty conscious effort. You guys strike me as a very intelligent school. I don't think it's a very big school, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, I assume there's a conscious effort in trying to get some international flavor. Yeah, so like you mentioned, we're not a very big school. We have 2,000 students. We're all undergraduate. It's it's a residential campus, so it's pretty unique in the landscape of Division One college athletics. Um and it's it's a rigorous academic school, so it's challenging. It's um, you know we like to compare ourselves to the Ivy League schools in terms of the reputation our degree has and the, the quality of the students that we have to recruit. And um, for for years, when my father, Bob McKillop, who was the previous head coach, was was trying to build the program, um, and he was used to head coach for thirty three years, so he he figured out ways to try to find players anywhere and everywhere that would one be interested in coming to Davidson, but two would have the academic credentials to not only get into Davidson, but to, 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 to thrive once they got here. So he, uh, you know, was uncovering every stone and turning over every stone to try to find those, those prospects. And we, we found ourselves going to Europe and looking internationally quite a bit. And um, it's, it's been great for us. And last year we started three international players. We've had two players of the year in the last four years that were one was from Iceland, one was from Austria in the, in this, in the Atlantic 10. So um, I believe that international players have a familiarity of Davidson because of Stephen Curry. And when they look a little closer in the recruiting process, they see some other people who've paved that same path and made the decision to go across the, the ocean to have a basketball career. And they've seen other international players succeed at Davidson and, 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 and perform well and, and be productive. And I think they, they're attracted to that, so it's something I believe we're going to continue to do. Coach, I wanted to, to touch on this as well to kind of bring an Indiana tie into this. When you talk about international, you know, obviously this was not a recruiting trip, but rather a trip for the growth of your young men uh, and perhaps for all of you that partook in it. Back in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, Eva Kaur, who was an Indiana native, well, not an Indiana native, but an Indiana resident, obviously, yeah. um, who was Romanian and was 
in Auschwitz as a young girl, along with her twin sister, and survived it, survived the Holocaust, and then became essentially the face of educating people about the Holocaust, uh, took your basketball team or accompanied your basketball team in 2018 uh, to what had to be an incredibly powerful journey. Can you talk about that trip that you were on as an assistant, what it meant for your players, and just how it all came together, and what you left there, what came with you from that? Yeah, I'll, I'll do my best because it was it was a moving, emotional um, trip, and and I you know it's. It's, it's tough to say it's a great experience because you go and you see such atrocity um, when, when you when you walk around Auschwitz. Um, and, and funny funny enough, uh, right before getting on this call, um, I got an email from from Alex Kor, who's who's Eva's son. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but Eva's Eva's husband uh, is I think he's a Purdue. He, he re- unfortunately passed away last year, but but he he's a crazy Boilermaker fan. Correct. Um, and uh, so, okay, so you, you're, you're familiar with everything there. But, um, but I got an email from Alex. I know he's going to be at the game, and he's become a really good friend of mine and, and our programs. Um, the trip came about, you know, in some, some kind of unique ways. We have a Davidson alum who's on the board of, a, of an organization that's a Holocaust remembrance organization, and they were trying to put together a trip for a, a, a younger group. So because, you know, as every year goes by, there's less and less Holocaust survivors, unfortunately, and there's this fear that, left away and we want to continue they want to continue to educate the younger generations about what happened um so that that's how we were able to go over there and and as you know every college team can take a international trip every four years and we were able to get a i guess a waiver from the ncaa because we weren't going to play basketball at all in fact we were only there for three nights um and uh it was it was amazing for, for all the ways that you could be touched and you could be moved and you could see resilience from people like Eva, who was a child when she was there um, and she was torn away from her mother. And she showed us that, that place in that moment where she saw her mother for the last time. And it was to have her tell our team this and to have such positivity about everything she did. And she toured us around. I mean, it was, it was an experience that will, we will all carry with us, I think forever. Um, and we got to spend time with her and she's 80 years old and she's gone through the worst thing in the world. And, you know, she can relate to a 18, 19 year old college basketball player who comes from a completely different background. And it, it just shows you what being positive, what, what working together, what being a part of a, of a group who has, has the will to survive and a will to do something bigger than themselves. It just, I don't know. It, it's something that you could take with you, you know, forever, I guess. So that, that's maybe my best answer. And I don't know, I can ever do justice to an answer like that because, um, what we saw was um, was horrible, but we, what we got to experience being with Eva was incredible. Well, I think... One experience. Geez. Yeah, and, wow. I, and I think both of the cores, Eva and her husband, you know, certainly I know that Alex's father, Eva's husband, was, was indeed a huge Purdue fan, uh, a big fan of Matt Painter, uh, and John Wooden, for that matter, who had played at Purdue. Uh, but I got a feeling, Coach, they're going to be watching this game from above and probably rooting for both teams, right, as a result of that, because that's an experience and a bond that... Uh, I think it's very special, and there's a lot of respect there, I, I think. So, um, you know, I'm glad you guys were able to make that trip with them. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm thankful you brought it up. That was, that was a, 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 I guess, a great memory, despite the word great not being a great characteristic for what we saw. But, um, but, I, but I appreciate you bring, bringing up our, our relationship with that family because they're special. He is Matt McKillop. Again, the Davidson Wildcats coming to Indianapolis this Saturday, approximately about 6.15 tip Purdue and Davidson after Illinois State and Ball State over at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Coach, I think it's a fun matchup. Obviously, a unique angle with the Lawyer brothers watching uh, Foster this year and Fletcher. Both of them have been extremely impressive in their own right, and certainly um, that family's got to be pretty proud of how both of those guys have played this yeah. season. So safe travels up here to Indy, and uh, good luck. Well, thanks so much, guys. Appreciate you having me on. That's Matt McKillop right there, the head coach again of the Davidson Wildcats on the Payless Liquors Hotline.